I figured I'd update you guys on the current situation. I've had a lot of friends recently buy Teslas like my friend here. And I do get a lot of questions about what's going on with the storm and the hurricane and charging and what, what have you done with your Tesla. First thing I recommend before the storm gets there, take out your, your charging cable, plug your Tesla in and charge it all the way up to the top, um, probably about 90%. Sometimes you can charge it to 100%, but I usually don't like to do that for battery longevity. I charge mine at home with my solar panels. So I have an 8.4 kilowatt system, and that's what I use to uh, feed the house and the car. Because Teslas are always connected, this pop-up came up on everybody's car as a reminder to charge your car and get ready for the storm. A friend of mine asked this really great question about hurricanes and Teslas and charging and evacuations. And basically, um, before the storm hit, all the superchargers were, were working. Um, you know, you charge your car full before the storm comes. When you want to get, get out, you have three to 400 miles of driving range. And hopefully you can get out to where you're going. The superchargers were busy, but they were all working. Now, what I'm going to show you here is after the storm. This has only been 24 hours since the storm hit. And you can see the gray. The gray means the superchargers are down. Now, this is in the Fort Myers, uh, Naples area. And you can see a lot of the superchargers are, are down. But you also got to realize a lot of these places are underwater still. So, obviously, the superchargers aren't going to be up. There's no power. Their gas stations don't work. I mean, nothing works. You know, everything's under underwater right now with this storm. Now, if you go up towards Tampa, the superchargers are working. But like I said, this is a pretty bad situation with the Category 4. Now, if you go along the I-4 corridor and you hit the supercharger button, you can see all these superchargers here. What is really cool is, is it tells you uh, who's at the supercharger, like how many stalls are open. It tells you the charging rate. It tells you... Um, and see this one's closed let's see let's find one that's open here there's another closed one that's in venice of course that one's underwater um let's see out of order yeah you can see the stalls there it tells you the stalls that you have there it is seven stalls available in saint pete so yeah it's really neat you can go through and see real-time data of what's going on with the supercharger network now, 99% of the time, I've never had any problems with any superchargers ever. They have road rangers that come out and service these superchargers. They're wi Wi-Fi connected. Actually, I'm sorry, cellular connected. And so they always know what's going on with these chargers. Now, with this situation, I'm sure they're rolling out trucks as soon as the power comes back to get all these superchargers back online. But a lot of them are just down due to the power outage, which shouldn't require any maintenance on them. But the ones that are underwater would have to be redone, I'm sure. Now, thankfully, we do live 27 miles inland, but I do really feel for these people trying to get out of the way of this storm, which did change direction several times. Now, you will see a lot of the um, other areas like Daytona Beach and Jacksonville where the storm is going up. You're starting to see the power outages and the superchargers, of course, because, you know, obviously they're electrical. They're, they're going to go down, too. But now the gas stations are out of gas, so it's not like that's a, a sure thing either. If we go up to Atlanta, you'll see, um, hit the supercharger here, you'll see all the superchargers are up and running. So you've got no problem anywhere else, you know, in the country, obviously. Now, you can take these cars or any... Uh, any Tesla cross country uh, with no problems. I have several friends who've driven across country several times. They take them camping. They've gone, you know, up in the mountains with them. And actually, they're really great for camping because they have like a camping mode. They have dog mode, so they just run the AC all the time. So you can actually sleep in the cars, which is kind of neat. And you can see all the stalls here. Uh, most. 
uh, Tesla superchargers had between six and 30 stalls. Um, and now older cars like mine, any Tesla older than 2017 is free supercharging for life. And you can usually supercharge a Tesla um, to a full battery in about um, you know 20 to 30 minutes. Um, like I said, you wanna charge to 100% during a hurricane. Um, I, I don't do that, I keep it around 90%. I usually don't like to go up that high. But like I said, we just, or we were just gonna hunker down here and keep the car in the garage where it's safe. Now I will say that um, Tesla is gonna open up their supercharger network to other electric cars, not just Tesla's. And that really is a game changer for the other cars. And the reason I say that is uh, the other networks like Electrify America and ChargePoint they really honestly do not maintain their chargers as well as Tesla does. So when you're out traveling, it's kind of hard to, um, to travel because you don't know if, if a lot of their chargers are up and running. So you really gotta do your homework. Whereas Tesla, 99% of the time, their, their chargers are gonna be up and running. And when you're sitting there charging, you can fire up Netflix or Hulu or Disney Plus and sit in the car and watch that, which is kind of cool. The kids love it. I'll show you some good and bad stuff here. So my car is a nine-year-old Tesla with 137,000 miles, but I still get Hulu, uh, Netflix, Disney Plus, all the cool stuff. But because most of the cars now have the um, the horizontal screens, I have a vertical screen. You can see like this, they have this thing where you can kind of minimize the video, but on the vertical screens, it doesn't work very well. It does work really well on the horizontal screen Teslas, which are the newer ones. So that's kind of funny. Anyway, if you have any more cool questions about Teslas or electric cars, please ask me and I'll make a video and I'd love to answer your questions. Thank you and have a great day.